perhaps you've just been diagnosed with it, or maybe even you're just a little bit curious. Well, in today's episode of Dr. Nora, I go through everything you need to know about genital herpes. First up, let's talk about what actually is genital herpes. Well, genital herpes comes from a virus, and that is the herpes simplex virus. Now, there are plenty of viruses out there, and these particular herpes simplex viruses come in two forms, HSV-1 and HSV-2. Now, some of you may have heard of HSV-1 as being the one that happens around the mouth, and that gives you cold sores, typically. And generally speaking, HSV-2 is one that gives you blisters downstairs, aka genital herpes. However, because of increasing different practices and so on, we are starting to see HSV-1 happening downstairs and vice versa because of the different practices that we're all doing in our day-to-day -day lives. But Dr. Nora, what is HSV and why do I even care about it? Like, what does it affect me? Well, it is actually a really common STI or otherwise known as a sexually transmitted infection. Now, anecdotally, through my own practices, I have seen quite an uptake of people coming in with their first presentation of HSV2 or genital herpes. So I thought I'd make this video out for you guys out there because a lot of people come into my door and they might be in the early tweens, so the early twenties, and they've come in and it might be after the first time they've ever had intercourse with somebody and they've broken out with these genital herpes and they are absolutely distraught and distressed. So I'm hoping that this video today is gonna to help to bust up some of those myths and help you guys feel a bit more confident and comfortable in your day-to-day -day lives. Okay, Dr. Nora, so you've said that you've seen a lot of these cases recently, but how common is it actually? Well, in Australia, one in eight Australians over the age of 25 are actually diagnosed with HSV, so herpes simplex virus. And having a cold sore or a herpes simplex one on your mouth is a lot more common than having HSV2 or genital herpes. Now, the reason this is, we think, is because HSV2 is less commonly diagnosed. In fact, actually studies have shown that 30% of the population have got genital herpes, but maybe 80% of them are actually undiagnosed. So that goes to show that perhaps we're just a little bit scared about talking about these things or we don't want to approach our doctor and that is generally what I tend to see in general practice as well. Okay, so we've seen how common it is and we think it might be more common than we actually know. How is it actually transmitted? Well, the herpes simplex virus is transmitted through skin-to-skin -skin contact. Now that is general, very intimate skin-to-skin -skin contact with someone like your friend here, Scully, who obviously has got no skin. So <laughs> you won't be able to get it from my friend, Scully. However, we tend to get cold sores if, for example, we kiss somebody who's got a cold sore on their mouth, or perhaps somebody who's got blisters downstairs and you're engaging in sexual practices with that person. So then clearly the way to avoid the transmission is to avoid any close contact with somebody who has got an active blister. Now that could be somebody who's got an active cold sore on their mouth or somebody who's got any blisters down below. And that is probably the number one way of protecting yourself against any of these SDIs. However, we do know that sometimes you can actually transmit the virus even when you haven't shown any symptoms. For example, if you don't have a cold sore, the virus may still shed onto the other person. And that does depend on a few things for that person who is receiving the skin to skin contact, whether or not their immune system is nice and strong. And we'll go into this in a little bit more detail later on in the video. So let's just focus in on HSV2 or genital herpes. Now, as a general practitioner, I tend to see things come in waves. Now, a few years ago, I remember when gonorrhea was all the rage over here on the Gold Coast, <laughs> and we got through that through some good contact tracing and lots of treatment as well. And then last year, we saw quite a bit of chlamydia going on, and this year seems to be herpes simplex virus year. I'm seeing a lot of patients coming in, perhaps in their early 20s, perhaps in their late teens, coming in with these horrible blisters. And generally speaking, when you have that first episode of genital herpes, it is often the worst episode you will ever have. And people will come in and they might have a prodrome, which means they have a bit of illness before they actually get lesions on their private parts. And that could mean that they might be feeling really tired or they might be feeling feverish or they might have headaches and they feel really sweaty or they just might not be feeling very well. And then generally what happens after a bit of time, they may start noticing some appearances of blisters in places that shouldn't be there. And so it's generally what we tend to see is blisters which can ulcer and they look ulcerated and they look really painful and they're really sore. And one of the commonest symptoms for patients who are presenting with these symptoms is they may feel an itching sensation. They might feel really kind of a burning sensation or this horrible, uncomfortable feeling that they may not be able to walk, they may not be able to sit down comfortably. And that is often the time when we tend to see them in general practice because they're screaming out for help. In addition to those itching feelings and the burning sensation, you may also notice that your glands in your groin area start swelling up. And so you might start feeling some lumps and bumps in your groin line. And that means that your body is fighting this infection and it's working as hard as it can to get rid of it. And so hence all of your glands start swelling up as well. 
So then at this stage, hopefully you'll go and see your doctor and they may ask to examine you. And sometimes this may just be a simple having a look at the area and they may take some swabs as well. And the idea of the swabs is to get an idea of exactly what type of the herpes simplex virus it is, whether it's herpes simplex one or two. And we can check that through our swab testing methods and we send that to the lab and we'll get the results usually after a few days and let you know. But before we get to that point, we don't leave you by yourself. We don't leave you in that horrible, tremendous pain. No, no, we can generally as doctors make that diagnosis on the day because it looks like such a typical presentation and treatment can take a number of forms. For example, we may offer you some anesthetic cream, which can be a real lifesaver for a lot of people. And other times we can also give you medicines as well, which take the form of some antiviral medication, which helps to reduce your symptoms itself. Now, for those of you out there who think you can do it by yourself, you can be macho man. Well, yes, you can sometimes get over the herpes simplex virus by yourself. And sometimes it just takes a little bit longer, a few more days extra than if you were to take it through medication, for example. But symptomatically, taking medications can just be a lot more of a relief for yourself. OK, so you've had your first episode. How long do symptoms last for? Well, sometimes after your first episode, it does take your body a fair bit of time to get used to it and get back to normal again. And this for the first episode can take a few weeks. So you may not be feeling your best and you may still feel a bit uncomfortable down there and perhaps even a little bit itchy as well. It is super, 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 super important, guys, that if you are experiencing the symptoms and you are on medication, that you do not have any intercourse during this time. This is the time when the blisters are active and this virus can certainly shed very easily from one person to another. So we do recommend, and your doctor will recommend this to you, that if you are symptomatic at this stage, do not have any close skin-to-skin -skin contact at this time. Otherwise, you are at risk of infecting your partner as well, which isn't ideal. Who wants to do that? No one. So once everything is settled down, then obviously the best way to protect yourself from getting any or your partner any sort of um, infections later on in life is to use barrier contraception. And generally that will take the form of, say, a female condom or a male condom um, in those sort of situations where you might be practicing um, intercourse in, in different manners as well. OK, so you've just got through your first episode of genital herpes. What happens next? Is that it? Is that the first episode? Is the last episode? Is the virus gone from my body? Am I cured forever? Well, unfortunately, genital herpes or the herpes simplex virus does lay dormant inside of our nerves. And unfortunately, there is no cure for genital herpes or the herpes simplex virus. And it may come back in future to say hello again, and it may cause you those symptoms again in the future. Now, typically, we know that the first duration is always pretty much the worst one and the longest, and it can last up to three weeks. But any recurrent episodes thereafter may be a lot shorter in duration. And sometimes we know that it can last up to only one week in total. Now, it's not all doom and gloom. There are some things that you guys can do to help yourselves from getting any recurrent symptoms in the future. And these are as follows. First up, my number one tip is to make sure that your immune system is on point. Guys, if your immune system is really flat, you're not sleeping well, you're not eating well, you're just, you're just not feeling great within yourself, picking up all of the bugs left, right and center, it is more likely that herpes is going to come up and say hello and bother you in the future. So make sure that you are eating well, you're sleeping well, and you're doing everything that you can to make sure that your immune system is building itself up. And remember, guys, the immune system does regenerate at nighttime whilst we're sleeping. So having a good eight hours of sleep a day is really important to keep yourself healthy. Other reasons why you might get recurrent infection is if you're feeling super stressed. Now, this kind of ties in a little bit with your immune system being run down. But if you're somebody who is working maybe 18 hours a day and you're super stressed, it is more likely again for you to get recurrent uh, herpes infections as well. And we also know there are certain groups as well who do get recurrent infections. For example, ladies who may be menstruating, they may get some recurrent episodes around their menstrual cycles. And also people who may be drinking excessively um, alcohol, for example, that can also cause you to get recurrent episodes too. Similarly, people who are immunocompromised, which means that they may have another underlying illness, uh, perhaps um, such as an underlying virus, such as HIV, or perhaps those people who are on chemotherapy for cancer treatments, they're also at risk of increasing their chances of having recurrent infections. So things that you can do to make sure you are keeping yourself nice and healthy is, as we said, sleeping well, eating right, reducing the amount of alcohol you're having, and just maintaining a really healthy, balanced lifestyle. But of course, there are other things we can do if you don't have the herpes simplex virus and you simply want to just reduce your chances of getting them. I'm going to reiterate what I said way back at the beginning of the video, which was to make sure that you're always using barrier contraception. If you want to reduce your chances, then we know that this can greatly, greatly, greatly reduce your chances of 
getting any viral shedding from anybody who may be symptomatic or asymptomatic. Of course, as we said, if you are symptomatic, then we definitely do not encourage any intercourse or any close contact until your symptoms have settled. So to recap, here are my five top tips about genital herpes as presented to you by Mr. Skullman. Mr. Skullman, take it away. Five tips on genital herpes. One in eight Aussies are affected over the age of 25. Practicing oral with a cold sore can lead to genital herpes. Don't do it. The first episode is often the worst episode. You may have fever, chills, gland swelling, and so on. Prevention is key. Avoid skin to skin contact when you are affected. Use barrier methods and speak to your doctor for help. Got that? <laughs> Finally, see a doctor for treatment and relief of symptoms. Well, thank you so much, Mrs. Skullman. I couldn't have said it better myself. I hope you guys have found this video useful. And of course, as always, if you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to drop me a line in the comment section below. But for now, take care and stay healthy.